Hotels have been hiding a dirty housekeeping secret from everybody this whole time. For customers and Airbnb hosts alike, it's wild to think about once you realize it. They have a sneaky way of taking advantage of the fact that they get to come into your property or into your hotel room every single day and make you think that it's for you, make you think that it's a service to you. This gives them three huge advantages and I just realized it. After employing housekeepers for what, eight years now? Almost eight years by the hour, copying hotels in a large way, I just realized that their entire business model has one sneaky advantage that I'm gonna show you guys in this video. I can't guarantee that you can replicate it. Some of you can. So for those of you who can copy this, you should. I'm gonna try at some of my properties, but dude, this is big. Let's get into it. Welcome back, guys. So I'm at the Cosmopolitan Hotel, which I'm always at in Vegas because they mostly let me stay for free because I like to throw dice. And I just finished my two-week wet trip to Burning Man where I cooked for tons of people and got to take my bus around. Yeah, so my bus is still not registered. I got so many tickets on the way up to Black Rock City and thank God my uh, Burning Man camp has a lawyer that specializes in Nevada law who's gonna save me, hopefully, from some of these tickets. One of those included no registration. I got caught speeding a little bit. I failed to blink when changing lanes, all sorts of stuff. That cop followed me for three miles while I was in the bus because I just couldn't quite see behind me enough with how close she was to pull over. I think I made her upset, so she wrote me a lot of tickets. Oops. But to digress, I'm back at a hotel. And they come in every day to clean, unless you ask them not to. And it hit me. There are three huge advantages for this when it comes to paying your housekeepers by the hour. A lot of you with houses know it's nearly impossible to pay housekeepers by the hour, right? Because you have maybe, what, two checkouts a, a week, right? Two checkouts a week. And when you clean that house, it could take 13 to 20 hours of labor to get the place clean, which means they need two, three, four housekeepers to clean all within that 11 to 4 p.m., 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. window, right? It's really impossible because of that human resources bottleneck, let's call it that, a human resources bottleneck. So you need zero housekeepers four days a week or five days a week, and you need four housekeepers two days a week for five hours. It's really hard to employ anybody like part-time, impossible full-time with that, right? Now in my world of arbitrage, you know, apartments, we can have cleanings almost every day. Especially when you have 10 or 15 apartments in the same building, it's really easy to have a couple every single day, which is nice. This is kind of like how hotels work. They pay by the hour and they have a quota, like 14 rooms per day that housekeepers have to turn over. Right? And in order to get this done, they use a sneaky trick. They come in every day. Now, here are the advantages of coming in every day to clean a property. And maybe inside of this, you'll find where you can do something like this too. Some guests are just super messy, right? You ever come into an apartment or a house and it's just a total mess and you have no clue. Well, coming in every day, you can not only find out who's super messy and start to mitigate that, but even if it's not super messy, you get to pre-clean apartments every single day. You get to clean the toilet, you get to clean the bathtub, you get to clean the sink, you get to clean the shower, you, need, you can pick up the floor, you can take out a bunch of the extra trash. You can start to make sure that when somebody checks out, that it's not a disaster, right? So what this does is this prevents the need for all of a sudden a surprise amount of housekeeping, right? If you've ever cleaned an apartment that should take 40 minutes or an hour, and all of a sudden it takes two and a half hours, that's a bad surprise. And if you've only employed for the day, enough people to clean in a regular environment, you're scrambling to find another housekeeper to supplement that. And we've had a lot of issues with this, where one of our housekeepers go, hey, this is a total mess. We can't get this done in time. And we have to let the next guest know, hey, sorry, but the last guest was just completely messy and we won't meet our housekeeping timeline. Can you come in a little bit later or can we accommodate you some other way? This is something that happens frequently, no matter what kind of property you run, messy guests, throw a wrench in your wheel. So that's advantage number one, preventing the scary, unpredictable spikes of housekeeping that's needed. Now, number two is if you pay your housekeepers by the hour and you have maybe five or six or eight people on your team because Sundays are your biggest checkout day where you need six or eight people, but the rest of the week, you just don't have enough work for everybody. By having people come in and touch all of these apartments or houses or rooms in the hotel's case and do a little bit of turnover, you're spreading that workload from Sunday, right? And you're spreading it across the week because those checkouts on Sunday will take less work because you're pre-cleaned. But you've also given people work on Saturday to come in and do a little something something. Friday to come in and do something something. So now you're evening out your staff count throughout the week so you can keep six people on payroll and they don't quit because they don't have enough hours. You're able to give people hours in a way that's justifiable 
that evens out. So instead of having eight people on your team, you would only have six because you won't need all eight on Sunday because things will be faster to clean because of all the pre-cleaning you've done. But then people also get work on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. This allows you to manage a team more effectively. Less surprises, less spikes, a more even chart of workflow throughout the week. And third is that illusion of hospitality. See, you would think that the housekeeping being done every day is a service for you. Oh, hey, we're gonna make your bed, we're gonna clean your place up, we're gonna make sure that every day your hotel looks good and we're doing it for you. But I promise you that hotels would not be spending all of that extra money on labor if it was just for you, right? Because hosts, we don't have to do that, do we? Most of us have found ways to make it work without paying for housekeepers every single day. Hotels would do the same thing. If you think about it, extended stay hotels where people have to stay by the week don't have this. They'll still have a mid-state cleaning. I know that those places will have people come in and check on the places once in a while, but for that price, you do not get new sheets, towels, pillows, you don't get the turnover. And those prices are only nominally smaller than a regular hotel room price. So there's already proof in hotel dynamics that they would prefer not to come in and clean because they want to save that money. And since weekly hotels have less in and out activity, they'll have less housekeepers, they'll have an easier to predict chart of checkouts and check-ins because they're not on Priceline.com jamming in last minute stays. A weekly hotel doesn't do that. They have weekly rates and people check out on Tuesdays and Sundays and Wednesdays all just the same. Those flow differently than a regular short-term hotel that has nightly rates. And did you know that you can be on Priceline.com too? Yeah, it's a booking.com feature. And as much as I don't like booking.com, I really like Priceline.com. So it is a necessary evil if you find yourself in urban markets with apartments, maybe to use booking to get on Priceline, maybe. Or if you're coastal too. A lot of my students in Florida use booking.com because a lot of their customer base, where they're traveling from, booking.com is a thing. So depending on where you are, booking.com might make you no money, Booking.com might make you more money than Verbo. Booking.com might even compete with Airbnb in some markets. Wild, right? I do teach how to hire housekeepers by the hour and run those teams. I've been doing it for almost eight years, like I said, and I have some students who have been saving thousands and thousands of dollars per month on running their housekeeping teams by the hour as opposed to paying housekeepers for one-off cleanings. I know a lot of you might be scared of this change because it is just so counterintuitive to what you know as an investor in the short-term world. But if you go from investing in short-term rentals to running a hospitality business, which is how you become actually competitive in this industry, you're going to need to hire your housekeepers by the hour. And you're going to need to know how to run a team of people. This is how we make our money in the industry. This is how we compete with the lazy investors. So if you would like to learn pricing strategy at a high level, how to hire your housekeepers by the hour, how to get landlords to give you free rent if you're doing arbitrage, how to set up your business, get business funding, interior design coaching, because we have a coach on our staff for that now too, how to do market research to find the best property types and where, how to negotiate with landlords so they'll tell you yes to do Airbnb if you do arbitrage, all that is stuff that I teach in Cracking Superhost, and you can just let all the student testimonials really speak for themselves. We've been having a blast in the program, and um, I'm proud to say that we've helped students pick up over 5,000 properties since we started coaching, or since I started coaching and then started adding on coaches. We now have five coaches in the program. That's a lot of coaches. And we do 10, 12 hours a week of live coaching where you could talk to me or talk to another coach via Zoom. We do 10 plus hours of those a week, which is a lot of active mentorship and one-on-one -on -one coaching because your situation is different than somebody else's. And I realized that in all of my time, doing free content and then doing paid video content webinars, the stuff that people value the most and have needed the most is for somebody to say in very clear terms, you are different for this reason or you are just like this other person for this reason, so change your business model or just double down and recommit. Some people are too scared because of their circumstances to think that when I say you need to raise your prices and do a three-day discount, that, that applies to them. They're like, well, I'm not successful and publicly available information can't be the way that I'm gonna succeed. Well, sometimes it is. But then somebody says, hey, here's my market, and I go, oh yeah, don't do that, right? Just raise your prices and just charge a premium on the nightly and just jam only one night stays and then hire housekeepers by the hour so you can save money in your housekeeping. Every market will be different. There are best practices to follow that are baseline. And then from there, we evolve and we adapt based on what our product actually is and how we meet the market. So if you want some mentorship where I can tell you where you're unique 
and you should change your business model, yeah, show up to my Saturday Zooms. I do them every Saturday. And like I said, we have other coaches that specialize in business funding, interior design, managing at scale, customer service, hospitality, all sorts of stuff. We got a really cool coaching team. I'm really proud of our guys. At the end of the day, you wanna be more like a hotel where you can be. And you wanna be like a short-term rental where hotels can't be, right? You wanna be unique enough that people choose to stay with you, but you wanna be reliable enough predictable enough where it matters, consistent enough that people can depend on you and they'll continue to book with you. Because I think that's the biggest problem with our industry right now, is even though we've got massively awesome products across the world, we just don't have enough consistency in the way that they're run. See, hosts, we don't have unified systems. We all do it differently, which is part of our charm, but when a person is traveling, especially from the United States, people from the United States don't get enough vacation time and they're nervous. They're neurotic travelers. Sorry to call you guys neurotic, but it is what it is. If you only have seven to 14 days of vacation time per year, and you don't tend to have good travel experiences, you're gonna be a ball of nerves getting on the plane, getting off the plane, checking into your room, stuff like that. The moment something goes wrong, people lose their minds. And that's why you need systems. That's why you need to be able to predict what tends to go wrong for people and prevent that. Part of being a magical host is to know where things go wrong and you're protecting your guests from those experiences. This comes through repetition, I think. Trial and error and repetition and insight and self-reflection going, oh, I tend to screw that up. Let me try to fix that. There's nothing that you cannot do in this industry with a little repetition. You can figure it all out. Like the check-in process is one thing. If enough people show up to your house and have a hard time with your keypad or finding the lockbox or finding the, the proper door to check into, you know that there is a communication gap or simplicity gap there and you should fix that. Don't say, oh, 85% of my guests have an easy time with this, the other 15% are just dumb. No, you need to plan for dumb, plan for dumb. Dumb is where you make your money. Dumb is where you get all of your loyalty because people want to travel and get a little less intelligent. People wanna shut their brains off when they go on vacation. So let them be dumb, plan for dumb and people will love you for that Believe it or not, they won't be offended. They'll be so happy that everything is so simple that even a child can understand it. Okay, get it? So in the description, there will be a couple links for some webinars, some workshops that I'm doing. One is on rooms. If you wanna learn how to use rooms in your house to increase your revenue because Airbnb is really pushing that lately, go for that. I've also got a workshop on arbitration because Airbnb is paying less on resolutions, paying less on air cover, and they've increased the amount of money that they're charging you for cancellations. And the only way to get that money back is through arbitration because Airbnb is putting up more walls now. So I will teach you how to do arbitration. I'm gonna bring in an attorney and we're gonna get this thing done. And I'll show you guys how to go through the arbitration process to make sure that you guys get paid all the money that you're owed. So find those links, I'll see you there. Those will have replays. So if you get a ticket for one of these workshops, there will be replays available. But if you attend those workshops, you can ask questions because all of my webinars have a Q&A section at the end. That way you can ask your unique questions and get your unique answers. Thank you so much for watching this video. And as always, I'll see you on the other side.